I'm going to try and explain the general solubility rule that like dissolves like. And to do so, we're going to take a simple analogy. We're going to take two, two groups of people. I've got some football fans and I've got some book nerds. For reference, I like reading. I think it's very important, but this slight exaggeration here is going to help make my point. Now, if I mix those two groups up in a playground, what would I expect to happen over time? Well, I think I would probably end up with a situation like this, where all of my football fans have grouped together and my book nerds have grouped together. And why is that? Well, my two groups have very different passions here. So I think it's much more likely that a football fan is going to end up wanting to talk to another football fan where they share passions and book nerds talking to other book nerds. So the resulting effect here is that we end up with no mixing between the groups, uh, as you can see in the diagram there. What about if we take a slightly different example? This time, let's take some football fans and some more general sport fans. Would I expect the same thing to happen? Well, no, actually, I don't think we would. I imagine in my playground, I'm actually going to see a fair bit of mixing there. And why is that? Well, this time, my two groups of people have similar passions. They can all talk about sport. They can probably all talk about football. So they're much more likely to be happy talking to each other as they are with people from their own group. The resulting effect here is that we get some nice mixing in my playground. Now, how does this apply to solubility in chemistry? Well, if I take two substances, let's take a polar substance like water and a non-polar substance like oil, what happens when I try and mix them together in a beaker? Well, what I would end up seeing is that I find two distinct layers in my mixture. The oil molecules have preferentially got close to other oil molecules and the same with my water molecules. So we end up with a mixture that has two separate layers. Oil is the top layer in this example because it's less dense than water. And if I have a mixture where there is a clear distinction between my two substances, we can call that a heterogeneous mixture. And why has this actually happened? Well, similar to our analogy um, that we saw earlier, my two substances ha here have very different intermolecular forces. Water molecules, which are polar, can form very strong interactions with other water molecules. So they would much rather do that than interact with my nonpolar molecules, which have only weak intermolecular forces. So my water molecules all preferentially group together, and that leaves my oil molecules uh, with weak intermolecular forces left interacting with themselves as well. How about then if we took two polar substances? Let's use water again. And let's take another highly polar substance, which would be ethanol. If I try and mix them together in a beaker, we find that actually we get some good mixing. We form a solution, which is also known as a homogeneous mixture, where my water and ethanol molecules are spread evenly throughout the solution. They have a uniform composition. So why have they mixed uh, in contrast to the previous example? Well, in this case, because they're both highly polar molecules and can form strong intermolecular forces, they're actually equally as happy to form those attractions with uh, molecules from the other substance as they are to form interactions with molecules of the same substance. So we get nice mixing in our mixture uh, and to the extent that we form a solution here. Now let's take a slightly different example. What about if I took two non-polar substances, in this case, oil and wax? Well, again, they've got similar intermolecular forces. So I end up finding that they are able to dissolve in each other. Again, I form a solution or a homogeneous mixture. Uh, why is that the case? Well, because they have similar intermolecular forces, they are equally happy interacting with each other as they are with themselves. And this kind of summarizes that key uh, phrase, like dissolves like. Substances that have similar or like intermolecular forces will be able to dissolve in each other. Uh, let's take one slightly more nuanced example. What about if I take a very polar molecule like water and a slightly polar molecule like hexanol? What happens when I mix those together? Well, similar to previous examples, they're kind of a bit similar. So we form a bit of dissolving. And you can see some of the hexanol is dissolved in the water towards the bottom. 
However, because they are not very similar in terms of their intermolecular forces, we might also notice that a bit of a layer has formed on top, in this case, hexanol. So if they are somewhat similar intermolecular forces, they might dissolve a bit, but not completely. Okay, let's see if we can summarize those key bits. And probably an important understanding here, this general rule of like dissolve like is kind of on a bit of a spectrum. So I might, for example, find on the left side very similar substances are going to dissolve fully in one another, which means we end up forming a solution. At the other end of my spectrum, if I have things that are very different in terms of the intermolecular forces they can form, then I'm not going to see them dissolving in one another, and I form a heterogeneous mixture, so no mixing has occurred at all, and I would likely see layers forming. Now somewhere in the middle, I can have things that are a little bit similar, but not fully similar. What's going to happen to them? Well, they're going to dissolve a little bit, but I might also see a layer forming as well. And that's pretty much it for the general solubility rule. Hopefully this video was of some help.